105.3 de FM. FM. La otra radio en tu radio. En tu radio. 8 con 3 minutos. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. Welcome to our show. I am Gloria Ruiz and this is Tip Stop and Topics. Tip Stop and Topics. XERU, University Radio, the voice of the university with a humanistic approach. To your university radio station, 105.3 FM. Broadcasting live from University Campus One, Chihuahua, Chihuahua. Tonight, we have a special show for you. Tips, talk, and topics of your interest. The most relevant news of the week. Interesting interviews with a special guest. Radio clips with useful tips. Be updated. We will bring to you the latest events about science, art, and culture, technology, and discoveries. Today, the world is in permanent movement. So do we. Please don't go. Stay tuned. And remember, this is XERU Radio Universidad. The voice of the university with a humanistic approach. This stop and talk. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for listening one more uh, podcast of Tips, Talk, and Topics. I'm very excited to share this space with all of you because I have to announce that this is the last show of Tips, Talk, and Topics because tonight uh, I am celebrating my 30th anniversary at the university. And after 30 years of working for my dear Uh, university um, I have like this mixed feelings that um, it is very important uh, the show the topic personal uh, projects and I am retiring but for sure a new project is going to be born and many things are coming for all the audience that are faithfully following uh, the show tonight I would like to introduce one of the uh, the most outstanding researchers that we have at the University of Chihuahua, Juan Daniel Machin Mastro Mateo, welcome. And it's a honor that you join us to close this important phase of uh, the radio show. Thank you very much for being here. Hello, everyone. And thank you, Gloria, for inviting me again. And of course, uh, it's a privilege to join you here in the last uh, show. Thank you so much. And as well, um, Alejandra, Claudia Alejandra Peña Neder is joining the show. Uh, very welcome to the show tonight. Well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to your very last uh, show, radio show. And well, we're happy to be with you and well, we will be with you for a couple shows. And well, good luck and thank you for giving us so much tip, talk and talk. That's, that's for you, Brent. Thank you. I know, and we are also having our dear professor Frank Malgesini, uh, the most uh, outstanding uh, guest that, that we have during these two years and a half almost. We broadcast 120 programs. Uh, the program started on February 24, 1917, 2017, and today that is. Uh, Uh, June the 28th, uh, nine, 2019, we count 120 uh, shows with uh, more or less 150 um, guests. Uh, it's a wide variety of topics, uh, the ones that we presented, all of them very interesting, thanks to the uh, people that gave us their time and shared their knowledge. So this is not the exception, Juan Daniel. 
and we uh, like to discuss this topic with you that you are a very outstanding researcher and we are going to talk about how important it is to write articles that have tremendous impact and there are very few journals that uh, the publications in humanities are like uh, more difficult to publish because everybody when you think about in terms of article publications uh, everybody thinks about discoveries in technology science but we are struggling to have these publications about human science and i would like you to um, expand uh, because I know that you feel very proud every time that a writer publishes a book or articles uh, it is like you're giving part of your life so please um, uh, tell us what is the process and how long have you been writing for this important uh, publication information development that is uh, addressed not only to Latin America but I mean to the whole world Yes, in, indeed, it's a very interesting topic and a very extensive one. I'll try to summarize my best, and please interrupt me if you want me to, to elaborate more on something. Well, first, uh, for any uh, professor, uh, university professors especially, that want to uh, put their mark and also uh, to uh, disseminate their uh, knowledge and their research uh, results, they must, uh, well, it, the most classical way to do it is through uh, scientific articles. And these are, uh, as we said in a previous show, uh, this model of scientific articles uh, have a, a couple of centuries, right? And uh, it has been quite a challenge, and especially for authors in the humanities as well as in the social sciences, because there are uh, fewer journals and the fewer journals that are well ranked or positioned in, a, in such a way that can grant the researcher points or uh, that can give uh, the researcher or the professor uh, more prestige in their institution and also in their own discipline. Well, at first, uh, what uh, someone, a professor who wants to uh, research and, and to publish their research, research results, uh, it can be uh, you don't have to go to do field work necessarily. You can do a literature review type of article where you just uh, uh, gather uh, sources and discuss uh, theories and uh, state of the art in a given research area, and then um, you can publish that as a valid uh, article as well. So, uh, a professor who wants to publish, well, they must uh, start to know which journals are important in their own area so they can use them to write their own paper and also uh, to know which are the rules, the formats, the style in which they have to uh, accommodate their own paper uh, in order to get it published. And also they want to seek a journal that uh, is well ranked within the uh, uh, journal ranking, it may be uh, Scopus or the Web of Science or the journal citation reports that is within uh, the Web of Science. Uh, the journal citation reports is the uh, most uh, famous or even infamous <laughs> of the uh, uh, rankings depending on how you see it. Because uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the term impact factor. The impact factor is calculated uh, with the by dividing the citations in a given period of time uh, among the number of papers published by a journal. And then you get a number, that is the impact factor. And depending on uh, this number, the journals are ranked. But the thing with humanities is that uh, humanities journals uh, are not granted an impact factor because they are not so uh, cited in quantity. So for instance- Sorry, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you. So, this, this ranking is changing lately because probably most of the governments in many different countries are changing their perspectives in terms of uh, humanity uh, science or um, you don't have a lot of uh, budget to research on psychology, education. What's the, the, the reason for this? 
Well, uh, part of that is perhaps the impact factor itself and the influence that it exerts on uh, research policy in different countries, because this is a, it has many decades, this model, and uh, it has been very fixed in the minds of the researchers and also in the policy makers uh, regarding science. And then if, I, if a discipline doesn't have journals with in, impact factor, they are not considered as uh, good research fields, let's say. It's, it's sad to say it, but uh, that's, that's the way it is. But things are starting to, to move a little bit and, and change. And hopefully, we will get uh, uh, other ways to measure. Well, we have other ways to measure. The thing here is that uh, policy makers in, the, in our countries, in Latin America, they must uh, also consider these other measures to measure uh, journals, to also measure and evaluate researchers, not just this classical way that is very fixed on the impact factor, on the journal citation reports, and also in uh, this field is called uh, bibliometrics. That is the, the way to measure uh, scientific publications. Right. Well, that's very interesting because this, all that happens behind the publication, uh, general public, we, we are not familiar with, and we don't have any slight idea how difficult it is to have a, uh, an article published in this kind of uh, magazines. It's and believe it, believe it or not, uh, the main challenges that uh, re a new researcher faces uh, to get their, their material published is in following. Uh, a manual of style, uh, it can be MLA, a APA, Chicago, Vancouver, there are many formats. But you must conform your text into the format that is required. That is one of the uh, reasons why papers are rejected. Also they are research, uh, rejected because the methods are not sound enough. Also because the results are not good enough. And an extra challenge that we have as Latin American researchers is that our uh, first language is not English, and English is the language of science. Uh, most of the journals are published in English, at least the ones that are well ranked. So uh, that is an extra challenge for us. We, we must uh, present a paper that is, uh, uh, is right and is good enough. It's not easy then, so if you, if you are know. adding all the requirements that you must meet, and not to mention that there is no um, uh, economic resources to keep on the research projects in Latin American countries, that very few universities have this extra budget that goes to researching humanities. That's why I think uh, all uh, researchers must start to understand how bibliometrics work and how the, all these environments of scientific journals work because they will have an easier time if they do early in their careers because uh, they, they can, uh, if they are in the humanities for instance, they can find a journal that, that is within the social sciences but it, that publishes topics that intersect with the humanities because the social sciences do, do have impact factor uh, journals. Uh, that is one trick, for instance. Also to write, start writing, if you don't have uh, enough uh, funds to conduct your research, start writing revision or literature review articles because they don't cost you. The university will have a certain number of the databases from the main uh, publishers in the world and then you have your prime materials to work in uh, revision uh, articles. And when you have enough articles, well, you make a name, a name for yourself, and perhaps it will be a bit easier to get funds, or at least uh, to finance it yourself. If you enter in, the, in our national research system, you will have a grant, but you need to publish in order to get in. Right, so everything follows a framework, right? Yeah. And when you decide to choose a topic to research and um, publish your, your article in these scientific journals, what's the process? How do you start? I mean, do you find something that is uh, happening, like it's very trendy, or that we have uh, a lot of uh, news in, 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 uh, in the newspaper or a mass media uh, issue? 
and then you start, you know, ha uh, reading and commenting about how often this problem is happening. So that's uh, an interesting topic to research about. Or how do you decide uh, what would be a good topic to research and to jump all those uh, obstacles in order to have an article published? Uh, in uh, in finding your idea or your topic to write about. Uh, in my case, it, uh, everything has happened. Uh, I mean, uh, a topic may be popular, and then I can write from my the perspective of my discipline about the topic, and also topics that interest to me. Uh, it can happen both ways. For instance, we had uh, a few years back the new objectives of the millennium from the UN, and then we had a, a series of, of articles in this journal, of, uh, in the column. Uh, for instance, one was about the first declaration of libraries, because after the UN made these objectives, then the library sector said, well, libraries, well, what can we do from libraries to uh, fulfill or work upon these um, objectives? And then we started to find the first declaration of public libraries ever. And do you remember what year? It was well, it, it was it was two uh, centuries ago. Or it was quite long? recent because we we focused on the first one in Latin America. That it, it was, I believe, in 1982 or 83. So just recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very it's fairly uh, recent. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we talked about the last one, that was uh, very close to the objectives of the millennium. It was uh, even framed. It's, uh, it was the Lyon uh, Declaration, Lyon uh, in France. Um, uh, the newest uh, declaration of public libraries. And then, for instance, there was also, there is uh, in Mexico now uh, a tendency to find what can we do as professors and researchers about violence. And then uh, we had the article with you about the uh, reading clubs and how they uh, helped alleviate violence in the city. We, but, are, going to, uh, we are going to, to discuss, comment it. On, discuss it on detail in the second part of the show. But and it was actually the second paper on the topic of violence, because we, we already touched upon it uh, from the perspective of uh, social and educational interventions that we can do within society to also alleviate uh, violence in, in our cities. Excellent. So it's not easy to decide. M many things are going on at the same time, and but in order to have the sources to research about it, in uh, here in our city in Chihuahua, how easy or how difficult it is to get all the sources to have this reliable information? It, it depends on the topic on, on, uh, and also on the discipline. Mm -hmm. Because um, if, if it's a very systematic or, or uh, already research uh, problem or topic, you will find other scientific journals uh, that have published articles on it. But if you have all other kinds of uh, issues or topics you want to tackle, uh, such as uh, sociological, anthropological, you must also consider um, uh, to use uh, brick and mortar libraries and also to go to ask people about it and also to, to find, uh, go to the archives. Uh, it depends on the, on the topic. So uh, you, you must know uh, which are your sources as an academic. Right. And also, if, if you wa write about trendy, uh, trendy topics, uh, you will uh, be more likely to get citations. That is another way that uh, uh, scientists get... are evaluated right. because of their ci citations they get. The popularity. And well, the it's a measure are... of popularity, more or less. <laughs> Because uh, well, just to, to to say it in in such a way that you know how how we understand uh, yeah, yeah. the importance and, of the article and in citations it also works uh, the same as as money the richer get more richer and the mm -hmm. most cited get get more, more citations too. every time right so it's a it's a phenomenon system. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right but you know like um, these these trendy topics um, will you say that Ethics um, work a very important uh, role here. Should I write, I mean, thinking of as an academic uh, professor, uh, should I choose or write about a topic that is going to get me more citations or is uh, 
better to choose something that is going to be very useful in order to uh, mention uh, or it is like a social consciousness to, uh, to awake this social consciousness about writing or pointing out something that is causing a big problem and somebody has to do something about it to solve the problem. And in, the, in this uh, dilemma, what, what do most academics do? I will say that um, within the current uh, system to evaluate researchers and science, uh, that is, as I said, it's an old system, but it's the current one as we, and we have it, um, <clears throat> you must do both. Mm -hmm. You must work in, in both fronts because you will you want to get citations and you want your papers to be useful for someone. And uh, usefulness is not equal to citations, not mm -hmm. not always, almost never. <laughs> right, but it's it is something that you have to face. That's the reality. I mean, if you are teaching, uh, you are a professor at the university in a, a PhD program or the master's program. Um, you have to guide your students where to get the best sources of this research and what will be the impact and the importance of, you know, investing your time and your effort and your resources in order to, you know, make them uh, write important papers for the use of uh, the university or in order to solve a, a problem or or how does it work being a, a professor and, and leading the students to read and write academics? Well, something very big uh, to, to teach uh, our PhD students and even the master's students uh, is to teach them about the sources and to make them uh, use the mainstream journals because it's very important. They will say, oh, no one has ever uh, published an article in mainstream journals about this topic in Chihuahua. Right. I say, okay, very well, indeed. But you must use some methods and theories to support your research, and those are published on mainstream journals. And you must use them as well as your other sources. And you keep a balance, and you keep also a broader view of the topic you are studying. Right, and here in, in our country, is it very difficult to get funds to uh, have these uh, articles published or do, do you organize your students to contribute to the publications or they are not ready to contribute to your uh, research? How does uh, this work? Well, as my own fi philosophy, I, I will not have students contribute to, to my publication. I, I will have it uh, one or, or of two ways or I pay it myself, or I get funds from the university or the state. Mm -hmm. And the latter is very tough, and well, the former is also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not, not uh, referring to the economic funds, but you know, the, the uh, amount of effort that you put in this research. Of course, that uh, you are as a professor, you, you have to write it, but I mean, <clears throat> there is a lot of things that you have to do in order to prepare your, your sources. Something you get from experience is to see uh, very well, to calculate what, very well how large is the research. Mm -hmm. And you must put limits if you want to publish a lot. Right. You, you must uh, draw uh, very uh, clear boundaries in your research of what you are covering in order to not lose yourself and, and have a research. Uh, in, in five years you have an article that, that is uh, no use for you. Okay, please allow me to use this article yeah. as an example. Yeah. Um, you wrote The Rise of Reading and Conversation Clubs During Chihuahua Violent Times, and it's proudly written by Juan Daniel Machine Nostro Mateo, and that you invite me to collaborate. But if, if we see this article, it is a uh, four page. Does it fit in the frame of uh, Canada or uh, the United States? or how do you decide the length of this uh, article? Uh, well, and, and how many hours of research did, did it take in order to finish this article? Well, to speak about the length, we should speak about the, this space in the journal. Right. 
that uh, it, this space is called uh, Developing Latin America, and this uh, regular column that is published in every issue of information development. Uh, right. This journal that has, uh, well, it has uh, 34 years. It was established in 1985, and recently we heard that its impact factor was raised. Uh, the previous one was 0 0.7, and now it's 1.2. All and right. it's a very well positioned, and it's a uh, it's a very well positioned uh, journal within the uh, library and information sciences. All right, we have to make a break, but we'll continue after the break. We are having our special guests, our professor Frank Marchesini, Alejandra Peña Neder, and of course Juan Daniel Machin Mastro Mateo. That we are talking about publications of uh, scientific and academic articles. And we'll be back very soon. Please stay tuned. Radio Universidad. Radio Universidad. 105.3 de FM. La, La otra radio en tu radio. 8 con 32 minutos. Well, thank you for staying tuned in Tips, Talk, and Topics. And we are um, saying goodbye to our audience because this is the last uh, po uh, podcast. And we are we are nostalgic and we are very happy. We have very important guests, Frank Malcasini, Claudia Alejandra Peña Neder, and Juan Daniel uh, Machin Mastro Mateo. And in this moment, we are having... Uh, a telephone call by one of the uh, followers of this program, Carlos Conti. Thank you very much for calling and following up the show. Uh, good night, uh, good evening uh, to everybody. Uh, I would like to say that I'm really sad because, as you say, it's your last program, and so it's very hard to me, as you can see, because uh, I have followed uh, all your programs and. I, I just, I, I would like to say thank you very much, and I would like to follow, and, and I, I don't know, uh, this kind of program must continue, because it's a chance uh, to all the students to practice uh, our English, and that's all. Uh, I would like to say thank you, Gloria. And, and you are an example to follow. Thank you very much. Carlos Conti, we appreciate a lot your your opinion and you have been a great follower. Thank you very much. I don't have words to express my gratitude because with all your club members, you inspire a publication of this article that we are going to talk about later. But please say hi to everybody in the Franklin Corner. That is a space to uh, uh, practice English and to learn English, uh, hosted by the um, uh, the British uh, uh, the Franklin Corner in the Mediateca. Of course, uh, hello everybody, and to I mean uh, to. Uh, I mean, complete this to the city and everybody that can speak or even practice English. And you just have gave us an opportunity to to practice. Uh, I mean, alive the, the English. And I just uh, can say thank you, Gloria. And and uh, I really wish. Uh, uh, a complete su su success and every that you can, I mean, that you continue doing in your life. Thank you very much, Carlos Conti. Say hi to everybody in Franklin Corner. It is a space sponsored by the British Council, uh, joined with the University of Chihuahua. And we, uh, to all the members of many other conversations clubs that follow us every Friday, we are, we appreciate it. Okay, thank you everybody and hello to the watch students and the uh, corner Mediateca Municipal. Right. And thank you. 
but keep practicing. This is a purpose. New projects are coming, so please follow Radio Universidad. Thank you so much for your call. Bye. Well, this this is very exciting for us that uh, people do their best, uh, you know, to express themselves. It's not easy. And uh, thank you to also to the History Club with uh, Antonio Gutierrez mm -hmm. and many other conversations clubs that meet in uh, bistros, in coffee shops, in uh, libraries that uh, f uh, follow the program, just an excuse to have a topic to discuss about. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice. Well, um, we just re uh, uh, remember that uh, we have this article to discuss about. And Frank, thank you for uh, joining uh, the show. And we are just uh, having this uh, opportunity to be, uh, you know, expressing our gratitude to you as a teacher. You're an icon in lengua inglesa, a professor for more than 35 years already, I think. 37. 37. He's got close to the microphone. 37 years teaching at lengua inglesa. And you have participated a lot in this uh, program. Um, literature. Uh, also very academic topics and also um, TV series like the Game of Thrones as well as so Juan Daniel with uh, the Star Wars series and Alejandra with a lot of topics about emotion, emotional intelligence and uh, she's a very talented uh, life coach. <laughs> so we, we, we are very, you know, all the uh, people that gave us uh, their time and come and uh, share information uh, with uh, the audience, uh, all my gratitude because you really make uh, the difference in participating in the show. So Frank, if you want to comment about um, the importance of uh, preserving this space for the English and Spanish speakers in our community. Well, in um the last thing later is we were very grateful to you for inviting us over the last several months to participate in these programs. Um, uh, they created a lot of interest in, in the community, um, both of our graduates and our, and our students. We receive a lot of comments on the programs in, in our um, student spaces and, and graduate spaces. and. Um, even suggestions for new topics and things like that, but but gradually over over the past nine months, we've been getting more and more response to the program. So we really appreciate the opportunity that you've given us to to um, well talk about different different topics in a more informal setting. As you right. So rem so this is a very important space created by the interest of our dean uh, Luis Alberto Fierro the dean of the university that he thought about the, this project in order to have, you know, a projection talking about all these things that are changing in the world, international projection. And it was like a, a pilot program to see, what, just to experience what will happen if we produce a show in English. And the response of the public, the students, the teachers that teaches in elementary schools, in uh, high schools, uh, public schools or private schools as well. Uh, everybody were just like waiting for Friday to see what was the topic. And they were, so the students didn't like it very much because they were having a quiz every Monday <laughs> about the, the discussion of the topic. But uh, I am very thankful to all the people that uh, follow the show because it is uh, it is uh, an excuse to, to practice English and, and to be you know well informed because all the topics that are discussed here they have a very uh, formal character but it are presented in a very um, friendly and light way uh, to put it that way and in the case of uh, Alejandra Peña that uh, all the topics that you present, they, they arose a lot of interest, especially among women. <laughs> and if you like to, to talk about your participation in, in these uh, topics that were uh, very controversial in the conversation clubs. Well, yeah, it's uh, been like uh, two, two years past, and it's just wonderful to have the opportunity you know, to talk about these important things 
not for women, but most likely women tend to like these kind of the topics we were talking, and uh, especially opening a space on radio, which I think was the vision of the dean here, saying, okay, let's let's speak in English in Chihuahua because the university needs to show that we can actually speak English in our students, and that was the idea. So in many ways, you created, because it was you, Gloria, with the support, of course, of the university, that gave us the opportunity to the people, professor, he was my teacher in Instituto Mexicano Norteamericano when you first came. <laughs> yes, I remember you came and uh, you brought with you the Alpha book, remember? It was the American English course, and then you said, this is better. So I was there, and I was nine years old when you came to 12 in uh, Avenida Bolivar, and I remember. <laughs> yes, I was your student for a while. And that's why you speak as well as you do. Oh, thank you. I did. I learned English. That's true. I learned my English there, and I was so, I love English. It's something I really like, and you were my teacher. And it's, and it's so wonderful. I like the way people get together, the impact that you actually wrote a, a, an article upon the importance of, you know, to get together and join and share the importance of everything that we live, that we have. And Gloria brought us together in a way to create the magic of being with you. So Gloria, besides being your friend for many, many, many years, it was a pleasure to, you know, to talk and give some nice topics to the audience here in Chihuahua. Maestro, it was very nice to meet you after many years. Thank you. It was a Thank pleasure you. to meet you to here. And Gloria, well, something new will come for you. And congratulations for all your efforts. Thank you. Um, I um, uh, have uh, the pleasure and I, I feel you know this privilege because you have this uh, opportunity in the university I start as a professor in, in the diplomado when it first uh, born and I worked there for a couple of years and then I had my base and I taught English in the faculty of uh, medicine for 18 years and after that, I move on to the faculty of odontology for another seven years. And I had also the opportunity to do some research about the uh, employee's uh, satisfaction with the students uh, from the WASH. And then I was called to work on this uh, project on the radio. And, you know, many different activities I did research, so that, that's how um, I learned how difficult it was to, to be a writer of these uh, academic um, articles. And the experience was why, thanks to my mentors, that I was you know, well-trained as a professional. And I, uh, I say it in a humble way, because we are proud to be forming the university as a professional that opened many, many doors that we never expected, we never imagined all the different practice that we are capable of doing thanks to the things, all the useful things that we learn in the, in the university. And, but uh, as I finish my time three years, I, I think I have to move on to do uh, other things that I feel, you know, this curiosity to try new things that I keep creating projects and I hope uh, probably in a short future after I rest a little bit, probably I come back with, with new things. But um, I think this project shouldn't uh, be uh, finished right here. There are a lot of students from Lingua Inglesa and other professionals that are trying also to, to have a, a new project because the public and the radio audience is waiting for that. Right, Frank, that you are working on that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, am, I think that there's definitely a need in Chihuahua for, for this kind of program. And we, we've experimented over the years. In, in um, 1985, 86, we had the page in Novedades, the, the Chihuahua on, on Sundays, that actually um, brought new students into philosophy and medicine. In fact, your classmate, Nora Diaz, found out about the program right. from that page. I'm a product of that uh, class in 1984. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then later, from 2001 to 2006, we had the um, graphite processor page in the Heraldo, which also, um, after we'd been doing it a couple of years, if there was a time when for some reason the space wasn't available and, and there was a Sunday mist, 
we would get calls from all over town because the teachers were using it for their classes on Mondays. And, um, and so we noticed that we were kind of surprised that in such a short time, the nine months we've been participating in this program, we're already getting a lot of responses from, from the audience. So I, I feel like there's an obvious need in Chihuahua for, for some kind of content in, in English for courses and for other kinds of things because the audience develops very quickly and naturally when we have this kind of program, I think. Right. And now, uh, Maestro Juan Daniel, please, uh, how the, uh, and I'm very uh, thankful that you made this uh, topic uh, come uh, it was a dream for me someday to collaborate in these uh, academic uh, articles and thanks to your invitation my name goes as a collaborator in, in this uh, article that for the university is very important for the radio uh, broadcast is also very important a recognition of the importance and the social responsibility that we have the radio hosts to uh, spread the, the information with very experienced and excellent professionals. And please, uh, if you want to tell us how did you inspire to write this uh, article that is published in this important um, magazine in the, in the <coughs> Journal of uh, Developing Latin America. Well, uh, when I came to the first show I participated, you told me a very nice story about uh, the reading and conversation clubs uh, in the city and uh, how they uh, emerged from a time of a very difficult violence in the city and how the show also uh, supported them and how they were fans of the show. And uh, this was a very, very interesting story for me. And uh, I have this space within information development that I was say, t uh, telling you that is called uh, Developing Latin America. It's a space that will have five years in December. And uh, the, the purpose of the space is to uh, highlight success stories within our region uh, regarding education, information, uh, communication, uh, those t types of topics and also to, to show uh, the difficulties we, we have had as a, as a region. And I think this topic was uh, very appropriate for that. And how, uh, <laughs> from the book and reading clubs, how citizens can organize and overcome uh, the difficulties to go out uh, at night in the, in the city, and how they gather to learn, not, ju not just to party, and how the, the show also emerged uh, in our university uh, to cater to uh, this, uh, this public with the, that were avid for English language content. So uh, I ask you to, uh, to give me an interview uh, to have um, the main draft of the, of the topics that were going to be covered within the, the paper. And then I, I looked uh, for some sources talking about, uh, uh, well, the, the importance of uh, cultural activities to alleviate violence in our cities and also uh, how people gather to uh, get informal education and those types of references are also, uh, they enrich the conversation about uh, the emergence of uh, book and reading clubs. I think I, when I, we made the interview and, and we were making the paper, I didn't know you were going to retire, but I think it was uh, very timely. Mm -hmm. the, just on time. <laughs> and just on time, the, the paper, and also I, I was very glad to contribute a way to record uh, also, the the impact part of part of the impact of uh, the show. Right, and thanks uh, to all your uh, citations here, and the the show, as I told you, probably we enjoy it very much, but we know that we have this responsibility with an audience, and as Mexicans or uh, these citizens. Uh, to be doing your job sometimes is not enough to contribute to the development of the country because we we want uh, things to get better. We have to work better to uh, inherit a better future for these uh, future generations. And being uh, uh, working um, 
with all your capability of doing the best that you can do and try it and your efforts should go further every time. I think that we are having this uh, awareness of consciousness in the, in the young generations today because of all the students that we interview with Fran, all the people that have participated, most of them were, uh, I mean, all Asians, all Franks, but we noticed this, this responsibility in these new generations, thanks to the alma mater of the university, that the backgrounds that they are building today are going to make the big difference tomorrow, thanks to people like you. And like you do, because as I told you before, you make it possible. Because he was here, I was there, and everybody <coughs> here. But how difficult was it that you need to get people to sit here and speak in English? Even they do speak English, they scare of the microphone. I have a doctor, a friend, he's my doctor, he's a great doctor. And I asked him, you know, when they come here and talk about, no way! He said, you write journals and everything else, there's no way I won't speak in English in front of anybody else. Wow, I said, so it was difficult to find people. So, so many times I have to talk with Gloria, because we, the, maybe the guests will say yes, but when they see the microphone, forget it. So the whole thing, make it, she made it happen, you know? And the kids one time were here, and we didn't know, and they just show up, these children, these kids from the club, and they want to see the cabin, and they want to share, and they want to speak English. They were so excited, and that makes it, that makes your day. As a teacher, as a person, as a professional, that's the, that's the difference, that's what you created, we create in a way, but the, the um, people are there. They just needed the space to express. Okay. At the beginning, it was very difficult to get the guests coming here and yeah. speak. And I remember the first the first show was on um, February the 24th. Mm -hmm. And we had these researchers about um, Sotol plant mm -hmm. and the uh, Faculty of Agrotecnologicas in Delicias. Uh, this, uh, uh, Doctors. researchers or doctors, um, they didn't speak a very well English, though they uh, write papers, uh, very important articles about, and a new project was born after we have this, uh, they dare, even if their English was, was not very good, they dare to have the interview in English, and a lot of people heard about this project that the university is working since 20 years ago, and we have a couple of communities in the desert surviving of uh, the Sotol plant. Uh, they're distilling uh, and making Sotol uh, products for the, cons uh, the consumers of uh, tourism and other uh, you know, uh, places where they can get their, their products. So I, I felt very happy that uh, some of them, they gave me these bottles of uh, cream of Sotol. And you know, it, it is something that, that we felt we contribute to uh, these communities in the desert to survive because they there, they heard about it and we spread the, the, word. the word, right. And then um, like we closed the show and then we have this um, uh, important article published that uh, I'm sure that you will have a lot of citations in this. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that you are going to become better known even more. And uh, to, to be you know, aware that we have this responsibility and all the efforts that we put on, on these projects, they give fruits. They, they, they will f uh, blossom somehow and it will be helpful for somebody else. So I feel happy that we are, um, that we reach this goal to have that people uh, instead of you know looking everywhere uh, who would like to come and share a, a topic with us at the beginning was very difficult and later as the show was uh, going on then we have the people calling and that they want to participate and we have a lot of uh, different topics like politicians engineers lawyers uh, life coach, psychologist, uh, people in the university, outside the university, public institutions, uh, a lot of young associations like ISAC, uh, Somos Jóvenes. The kids from Brazil who were here in interchange, they came here and they were talking. There's this asso association, what's the name? ISAC? Uh, I, uh, uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. Yes, they were here, they came here, and they were so excited talking about their experience in Chihuahua, how they make it. So it was a beautiful, beautiful program.
right? Also our our co-workers here, Gamaliel, that he is in charge of news programs, that he didn't speak very well English, but then after he you know, st started taking uh, classes, but he participated in a show talking about sports. You know, a lot of uh, people have this uh, interest, and I, which I appreciate very much that, you know, defeating all the, um, the barriers, uh, they, they made it to, to participate. And all this um, summary of experiences are in this paper. So <laughs> <laughs> you will get more citations. It's your reward for all the, the great things you, you made, Gloria. Oh, and this is something you. that you were saying, it's just not only happening in Chihuahua, this happens in many of the uh, cities in Latin America. So that's the importance of a work like this. No? You have the impact that you're looking for, because how many, you know, favelas in Brazil or different places in all over Latin America go through the same thing, and that's an idea. Let's create, let's through art or English mm -hmm. or whatever to bring children or young people. It's a common issue violence. and a common yeah. solution. It's exactly. So that's very, that's the main thing here. So creating a simple radio show have this impact. Imagine mm -hmm. if we make it as a must in society. Okay. Right. Well, um, we have these participants also in the United States, uh, participants from Michigan, from California, for New Mexico, and they also are having like a, a radio clip. But we we are going to say goodbye. It's, it's not for forever. It's very difficult to say okay. goodbye. But we also run against time. And Frank, I guess uh, last words before we just uh, play the, the, the clips. Uh, just to, to finish the program. If, yes. if, if, you, if you want to, to say something, to something that you're yeah. the participant. Well, I'd just like to congratulate you on this program, uh, Gloria. I think, I think it's a really excellent space for, for discussions of all sorts of, of important issues that don't really fit into sometimes the curriculum at school, and it gives people a chance to talk about things that they've researched. Um, and develop maybe further than, than other students, for example, um, projects that they've done and things like that. I think, I think it's just an outstanding um, space for, for um, presenting, for, for impacting the community. Sure it will. Maestro Juan Daniel. Well, just to uh, congratulate you, Gloria, for uh, all the shows that you made, and because you are an excellent and outstanding host of the radio show, you you made the guests uh, feel very comfortable, and also to to speak as as, as if we were uh, meeting in a cafe. In not, a not conversation in club. In a conversation <laughs> club, exactly. This is a conversation club. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you for your opinions, Alejandra Peñaneda. Gloria. Congratulations, my guest. You you did a great job, and well, I'm 100% sure that many good things are coming for you, and what you've done here is going to have, besides your beautiful paper, is going to have a higher price among the people who actually listen to you every Friday for two years. Congratulations, Gloria. Well, an honor to be with you. To all of you that follow the show every Friday for 30 months, thank you very much because you didn't get bored. On the contrary, you always suggest topics. You always uh, lead me to what you were looking for in the presentation of topics, science, uh, humanities, literature, uh, writing, academics, uh, yeah, emotional intelligence. And I would like to say goodbye with our friends in the United States that uh, dedicate us a message. Thank you, thank you very much to my dear University of Chihuahua. My name is Gloria Coconut Miller. I live in Chihuahua, Mexico. I was interviewed by Mrs. Reese in her great program, Tip Talks and Topics. I talked about uh, giving tips to how to learn English. I think this is a great opportunity for people that want to learn the English language or that already mastered the English language to hear about very interesting subjects. I congratulate this program 
My name is uh, Victor Guzman, and I live in uh, Michigan, United States. And I am also one of uh, Gloria's listeners to her program, Deep Talks and Topics. The topic of my interview was the state of the automotive industry in the United States. I believe that this kind of program, uh, like this one, Tips, Talks, and Topics, that Gloria has graciously hosted with her nice and always kind of an intelligent perspective, are excellent for the spread of the English language in Mexico. Being English, a de facto international language that allows people to communicate with other cultures and countries. Gloria is departing from this program but I hope that it continues for the benefit of the people of Chihuahua. My best wishes for Gloria and thank her very much for her time and effort to start and develop this program. Thank you. My name is Darius Porchasp. I live in Southern California, but have a wife and son living in Chihuahua. I was interviewed by Gloria Kuganor when I was once in Chihuahua. She wanted to give me an opportunity of introducing the religion I was born into and practice. Since very few people have knowledge about it, I was happy to do so. The topic was introduction to the religion of Zoroastrianism, which was founded 1,500 years before Christ and was almost totally destroyed by the religion of the sword, better known as Islam, not a religion of peace. It was my honor to be interviewed by her. She knew her topic and the questions she asked showed that she had studied up on the subject before the interview. I still listen to her radio broadcast, by the way, through the internet when I'm in California, as well as when I come to Chihuahua. I find the topics to be stimulating to the mind and also increases my knowledge through the topics she introduces. After all, the people of Chihuahua who had never heard about Zarathustra now do thanks to her program. X. H. R. U. 105.3 de FM. Radio Universidad. Transmitiendo desde el campus universitario 1. Las 24 horas, los 365 días del año.